Hi, my name's Phil and welcome to Labour Vision where we discuss Labour policies ahead of the election where we actually get to see them implemented. So with the manifesto released and the only speculation being how we read between the lines of policy statements, what is best to focus on with less than two weeks to go before the election? Well, for this video, I thought I'd address some key aspects of the manifesto which are not going to get much attention in the mainstream media. The first are the policies which will be the first out of the gate once Labour form a government, and the second are the historical injustices that Labour are committing to addressing in this Parliament. So the urgent moves first. Because the manifesto represents a whole mass of policies which Labour want to implement, uh, most of them will require parliamentary time and even early stages to complete. In other words, some policies will be implemented straight away, Others may take several years. So which ones can we expect the most quickly? Well, in theory, you might imagine very little. After the election, Parliament will form. Winning candidates will need to swear their oaths in order to sit. There'll be a lot of brand new MPs, so they'll all need inducting into the procedures. Later on in July, like literally two or three weeks later, Parliament goes into recess for summer, returning for about three weeks before going back into recess for party conference season. So not really a lot can get done until like mid-October. Doesn't leave a lot of time for that first 100 days programme. However, I gather that Starmer has suggested cancelling most of the summer recess in order to get cracking. So there will be more parliamentary time than would otherwise be the case. So what's it going to be used for? Well, we know there is going to be the Workers' New Deal legislation laid before Parliament pretty much immediately. I don't know exactly how much of it will be in the initial legislation, but we can certainly expect a boost to workers' rights to be passing through Parliament without delay. But the manifesto gives further clues as well. It talks about implementing some policies immediately, which presumably means over summer. The first is updating the national policy planning framework. In other words, Labour want to get building without delay. They want to reinstate the housing targets straight away and increase the number of planning officers in order to cut down the time it takes to get permission to build. There's also a promise to immediately abolish Section 21 no-fault evictions. Sometimes, you know, this is the Tories have been promising to do this for years. But they kept backing out of it because, do you know what, you'll never believe it. Loads of Tory MPs are landlords and they all disagreed. There'll also be ways to challenge unreasonable rent increases and demand timely repairs for privately rented accommodation. The manifesto also talks about immediate reforms for parliamentarians. Now, this includes for the House of Commons a ban on paid lobbying and advocacy work for MPs. The vast majority of those who engage in this sort of moonlighting are Tory MPs anyway. So however few are left are going to be really miffed at this. I'm going to enjoy listening to their whining in the debate on that one. But also the House of Lords. The manifesto talks about immediately removing hereditary peers as well as introducing this age limit, although that second one only has any practical effect at the end of the Parliament. So those are what the manifesto says will begin immediately. So those will be the first out the gate. There will be other policies implemented straight away, of course. Not everything requires primary legislation. For example, where Streeting has promised to meet junior doctors on day one of being Health Secretary, which will give us an interesting insight into what Labour in general have got planned for restoring public sector pay. We know that Labour won't be able to restore pre-Tory parity straight away. and Nobody realistically expects them to. But there should be a plan which gives the workers the confidence that actually their pay is going to get back up to where it should be. So that'll be a, a one to keep an eye on. Another interesting part of the manifesto, though, and again, massively overlooked, in fact, almost completely overlooked, are the way Labour are promising to deal with a number of uh, historical injustices, as they describe it. So many of these are long overdue. One of the solid commitments is for the so-called Hillsborough law, amongst other things, would mean, you know, civil servants and, and so on will have to provide accurate information, uh, no more cover-ups. One of the most egregious aspects of Hillsborough was the aftermath of the tragedy where you had people, public servants, who were basically compelled to lie to the inquiry in order to shift blame away onto innocent people. It not only meant the delay of justice for too many years, but it inevitably created a great deal of mistrust between the communities who knew the truth and the authorities who were feeding a different line to the rest of the population. Labour are also promised an inquiry into Orgreave, which is another Thatcher era injustice from my neck of the woods, where an army of police, and I mean an army, turned up to kick the hell out of some picketing miners. 
the manifesto is also promising to deal with the Windrush compensation scheme properly, the infected blood scandal, Grenfell, uh, respond to the COVID inquiry properly. We know that Labour are promising to go after the money defrauded on scams, such as the VIP lane during that time. There's also a promise to deal with the mine workers pension scheme. So lots of things that have been hanging around for far too long, decades, quite frankly, should finally see closure. And we also have to push the Labour government in this spirit to fundamentally change the way we look at these injustices. Because we call them historical injustices because they've been going on for too long. But there are new ones springing up all the time. Are we just going to keep tidying up after these problems have been allowed to fester for decades? Or do we say, no, we need to deal with them as they emerge in the long-term interests of not just those affected, but the entire country? So there we are, two aspects of the manifesto which aren't getting much attention. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe for further content, and until next time, I'll see you later.